Hey there people, this is Levi. Um, I got a really special package in uh, this week um, by Susanna Salo. And um, she made a really special tarot deck, the Mythologia Fenica Tarot. Um, and she was ever so kind, kind to send this to me. I got the tarot deck and the guidebook in English. And this is a really special deck. Um, so Mythologia Fenica Tarot is a representation of Finnish mythology in a new form. It contains a wide range of mythological beings, deities, nature spirits, events of Finnish national epic Kalevala, and aspects of traditional Finnish worldview. It also contains sh shamanistic themes and beliefs of other Finno-Ugric peoples. So a very cool deck, very um, based in nature. And what's really special about it and about the guidebook, uh, which I think you have to buy separately, I don't know, um, is that every card comes with the story that belongs to that card. Um, the book is really amazing. Adore it. Adore having that. I really have to delve into that a little bit, um, but I'm gonna do a sample reading uh, after the flip through. The art is really gorgeous, by the way. It's very, it's very folksy, very raw, very primitive, very primal, which I love. But I really adore, you know, how they how the deck is constructed, how they paired it with Finnish mythology. And um, essentially, <laughs> these could all almost be used as flashcards for Finnish mythology. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is, um, I'm gonna do a little flip through for y'all, and then you guys, so you guys can see all the cards, get a sense of them, and then I'm gonna do a sample reading where I'm going to be reading a passage from the guidebook. So I'll see you guys in a bit.
right, so it's time for a sample reading. And um, while I shuffle the cards, let me talk about the card quality. Uh, the card quality is right up my alley as it is very normal um, playing card cardstock, which I prefer to special types of cardstock. Um, so it's very basic. It's a little bit on the thinner side, which really suits me because I prefer to be able to riffle shuffle my deck and to be able to overhand shuffle easily without straining my hands too much, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, um, the, the card stock is fine. If you're looking for that super luxurious 400 GSM velvet matte touch, Cardstock, this is not it. It's very regular cardstock. Kind of reminds me of US Games cardstock. Um, and the deck comes in a very regular, normal chuck box. So, yeah, give me a regular, good, flexible cardstock anytime. So, let's see which card we get. Ooh, we get Five of Pentacles. It says Para. Now, I don't know what Para is. I do know that Five of Pentacles is not a very favorable card. Um, Let's see. Para was a supernatural being whose purpose was to steal cream from the neighbor's containers or to suck milk straight from their cows. Then it carried what it had stolen in its flagon-like stomach to its master and regurgitated the milk or cream into a churn. Para's sharp teeth were said to leave wounds on the cow's udders, and when mastitis made blood appear in the milk, it was held as a sign that the Para had made a visit. I know of this story. Para was created by using rags, bones, wool, animal fur, pieces of spindle, churns, and flagon-like leather sacks, sometimes even human bones. Usually it was created by a woman, the mistress of a house. Para's creator would first make a ball of the ingredients and then put a stolen wafer and blood drops from their own little finger as its heart. Para's legs, one or one to three, were all made from spindles or knitting needles. The finished creature was kept in a cradle-like bushel that was, that was used to sieve grain and it had to be brought to life during some magical moment like Christmas, Midsummer's Day, Easter, or the night before Thursday. This was done by spells and incantations in a sauna, mimicking a real birth. The moment Para came to life, it asked why it had been made and would then hurry out to fulfill its purpose. Ooh. Para always had a strong spiritual connection with its owner, for its mistress gave it a piece of her own soul to bring it to life. If Para was injured, so was its owner in the same manner. Ooh, that's kind of creepy. A yellow slime mold, Fuligo Septica, that sometimes appeared around houses or at pastures was called Para's feces, and it could be used to identify the Para's owner. One would simply have to whip the mold, which would then force the guilty mistress to come and beg the whipper to stop. The mold's appearance at a courtyard could very well be deemed sufficient evidence in a witch trial. Really interesting. And then it goes into this very long, like, extra page, extra one and a half pages about um, why the symbol of the para was chosen for the Five of Pentacles card, which is really interesting, but I'm not going to read it because I want to keep this video short and sweet. I just wanted to give you a little taste. I adore decks like these. I really um, want to thank the creator for sending me it. If you're interested in this, Check, uh, check it out, the Mythologia Fenicatero, available now. Gorgeous, perfect shuffleability. I mean, look at how this deck glides. Um, and thank you for your, all of your attention, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye.